this is the third installment of the Corona videos. <laughs> and uh, what we're doing is we're going to bend an, an inch and a half EMT conduit with the 1818 Greenlee mechanical bender. And the mechanical bender has different components on it that we need to pay particular attention to. That here's where the ratchet lad lines up with the, so that way we can actually bend the conduit. And over here is a handle that we have to have straight across perpendicular or I guess parallel with the floor would be the, the bend position. And then we can unlock it or unload it. We have it at an angle. So we've got to make sure that this is in the right position when we get ready to bend so that way the ratcheting mechanism will work. In here we have some pins. And I have a phenolic roller here that slides on this here. Now you'll notice on the side of the bender here it says three quarter inch EMT, half inch and three quarter inch rigid, three quarter and half inch uh, IMC. Or down to this next hole here, it's one inch EMT, one inch rigid, one inch IMC. Down here, it's inch and a quarter rigid and inch and a quarter IMC. Here, it's inch and a half rigid only. Here, it's two inch rigid aluminum only. So in these positions here with the mechanical bender, we use this steel pin with this phenolic roller that goes into whatever position that you're going to bend. Now, we're dealing with inch and a half EMT conduit. So we're gonna bend inch and a half EMT conduit. Well, over here on this side, you'll notice there's a hole for the pin to go in and it says inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two inch EMT roller. So what I need to do is I need to change this phenolic roller. I need to pull that off the pin. And I'm gonna wind up using a steel roller. Steel roller comes with it. And I'm gonna set that in there and put that in there so that way when this is being bent, the inch and a half EMT or the inch and a quarter or the two inch EMT, we're gonna wind up using a follow bar. And so we've got these two follow bars here. This one here on the side is for two inch EMT. And for this one here, you can barely see it now that we've used it enough, but an inch and a quarter. And then on this side, inch and a half EMT. So this one here, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and then the two inch. And notice it's got a hole on the back. So we can put this hole in the back when we're getting ready to bend. So we'll wind up using this with the conduit, the inch and a half side, and that will ride on the roller as we're, so that way the conduit will follow along. Now, we need to pick a different size shoe that's going to fit on here. You'll notice we set up the various shoes here where we've got one inch EMT or we've got three quarter inch EMT and you'll notice some holes on the shoe that's going to line up with the pin that's on the bender. That hole is going to line up on there to go on there properly. And the same thing with this one here. Here's a two inch EMT shoe. And so the hole is here. That's going to go on there. Here's a two inch rigid aluminum only shoe. And it's got the hole in there to go on the ratcheting mechanism as well. Here is the one for the three quarter and the one inch and the half inch rigid. It goes on there. It's a multi purpose shoe. Goes on there. This one here doesn't have a the saddle that goes on there, it's, it's actually part of the actual shoe. So we're going to bend inch and a half EMT. So I need to take this inch and a half EMT and one side is inch and a quarter and one side is inch and a half. So I'm going to make sure that this is lined up, pull this pin out of here, and I'm going to take this inch and a half EMT and I'm going to put it in here and line it up so that hole lines up with the pin on the ratcheting mechanism, this pin here, that I line that up. 
Come on, darling. There we go. Slide that clip pin back on there. And so now, inch and a half EMT that I can bend with this on here, and then we'll use this follow bar that will go up against the back of the shoe, the saddle of the shoe, when we get ready to do our conduit. One of the things that you want to be careful of when you're using this bender is that you don't leave the handle in the ratcheting mechanism while you're leaving it sitting somewhere on the job site. Because this will fall right down. And I've actually seen somebody take a hit on their shoulder when they happened to be walking by and something happened and bang, this came down. So every time you use this bender, you want to make sure that you pull the handle out, you're done with it, and you set it down here so that way it's there so that the next person can use it or you can use it again, but it's safe that it's not going to be in the ratcheting mechanism just hanging out there ready to hit somebody. So shall we figure out what we need to do for our bends? Let's take a look over here on this side and let's take a look at these charts here. Here we have a chart on here for the 1818 condo bender and this is for a stub up. And so there's a minimum stub length and there's also a deduct. Now we're bending inch and a half EMT and so the deduct for inch and a half EMT is 12 and 15 sixteenths. The minimum stub length is 14 and 11 sixteenths for inch and a half EMT. So we want to bend a 24 inch stub up and then we want to bend an offset after we bent the stub up, an eight inch offset. Okay, so we're gonna bend a stub up and an offset in a piece of inch and a half EMT with the 1818 Greenlee mechanical bender. The stub up that we want is 24 inches. And so according to the manual that you can get on your Brightspace page or online, if you so prefer, 1818 Greenlee mechanical bender, the stub to the bottom of the pipe, the stub length is 24 inches. For the EMT, inch and a half, inch EMT, EMT, the deduct for that was 12 and 15 sixteenths. Or you might as well just call it 13. A little bit extra isn't gonna hurt that much, one sixteenth of an inch. So let's call it 13. So 24 minus 13 is 11 inches. So our mark is gonna be at 11 inches from the end of the conduit to where we put the saddle for the shoe to go on to the so that way the radius will be taken out and it will wind up with a 24 inch stub up. Okay so we're getting ready to bend the inch and a half inch EMT in the 1818 Greenlee Bender. One of the things that we want to take a look at is here is a scale indicator, 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, all the way up to 90. So you can move this arrow on this scale indicator and put it at 0. I've got the conduit in the bender so that way it's locked in kind of tight to where this is going to be at. And if I go lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, I'm going to be able to lock this down and put it on zero. Okay, so I've got that on zero. I've also got a protractor that we can use. So just a rough indicator that we can gauge that we're going to bend a 90 degree stub up. And so what I want to make sure of is I've got the line 11 inches, the 24 minus the 13, 11 inches. So I've got the line lined up with the front of the saddle of the shoe here. And I've got the follow bar tight up against the saddle of the shoe so that way it's gonna make a nice bend. I also wanna make sure that I have the bending handle in the bend position. So, 
Generally, what I'd recommend is that we count the number of clicks, but we won't have to do that for the stub up. But they've set it up, Greenly set it up, so that way this is ergonomically safe. Uh, they they got it set up so that way it only does two clicks at a time, so that way the bender handle is right in front of you and you can go down and make the bend. So there's two clicks. One, two. There's four. Sometimes I put my foot on the back of the mechanical bender just to kind of prevent it from wobbling. Back in the day, they used to have it set up to where you could grab it from here and start bending, but we were straining ourselves and herniating our discs and messing up our backs and muscles and stuff like that, so they kind of set it up to where it was a little safer. Now I'm running about 75 degrees on the scale here on the side, so I know I'm getting close. There's 80. There's 85. And that looks to be like 90. So let's check it with the protractor. And I've got it set up the other way. But this here for 90 degrees be right about there. And you can see that we're right at about 85, 87 degrees before we're at the nine. Now, taking a look at it, it does look like it's just about 90, but not quite. So the scale indicator on the bender isn't quite as efficient as the protractor. I'm gonna go one more click, see where we're at. And it is at about 90 to 91. And you can see how it's bent a little bit more now past that point. Now we need to take into consideration spring back. So I think we'll have enough. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna put this in the unload mode. So this handle comes back. And you're gonna notice the difference in the sound and the click where it's a little bit, uh, it's just an easier click. It's just, hear that? It was a more of a brighter click. That means it's in the unload mode. So I've got it in unload mode. I'm just going to check it again. And it's right at about 90 degrees. So I'm getting ready to take this out. I'm going to take the handle off, put it down here, and I should be able to grab a hold of this. And I'll grab the follow bar, put it down here. I can take that out. And we've got our stub up. And let's take a measurement on the stub up. See if it's 24 or not. And so, take a measurement. And it's at 24 and an eighth strong. So that little bit of a 16th of an inch, 24 and an eighth strong on the stub up. Okay, now the next part, we're going to want to bend the offset in this that's going to be 36 inches from the wall or the back of that conduit. So we're going to want to take a measurement, and I can use my bender handle as a reference point. And I want to start the offset. And I need to find out what my measurements are. So we're going to go to the manual and find out what the distance would be for our measurements, subtracting Z and finding L1. OK? OK, so we're continuing our bend on the inch and a half EMT conduit on the 1818 Greenlee Bender. 
And we bent the stub up, 24 inch stub up on there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some measurements so that way we can put in this eight inch offset. Now notice how the, the obstruction is here. So we're controlling the end of the second bend. And in the manual, you'll notice controlling the end of the second bend that they require a length minus Z and L1 for this bend. So we look at the manual, inch and a half EMT, and Z for a 30 degree bend is 21.97, or so close to 22, you might as well call it 22. And L1, 30 degree bend, is 15.9. And if you remember the distance multiplier for 30 degree bend is two, and two times the eight inches of offset rise is 16, and 15.9 is so close to 16, you might as well call it 16. So we're dealing with a value of Z at 22. That was 21.97. And the length was 36. So 36 minus 22, this mark will be at 14 inches, 14 inches. And then from that point, we're gonna add L1, and L1 was 15.9 or 16, 16 inches. So that next mark will be at 30 inches. So let's go over to our conduit, and we're gonna mark out the distance that we need for the conduit. And so I'm using the bender handle for a reference point. You can use another piece of conduit or a wall, whatever you want to use. And the uh, mark was at 14 inches. So I'm going to measure 14 inches. And then the next one was at 30 inches. that mark all the way around the conduit. So that way it's easier to see and as I rotate the conduit for the next bend. Hundred and eighty degrees that I've got a mark on there that I can see from whatever angle I'm working at. I'm using a dry erase marker for the like the whiteboard because it comes off really easy. If we're gonna use uh, this conduit run was going to be exposed where people are going to see it all the time you might want to use a, a graphite pencil so that way the pencil marks will be taken off there if you use a sharpie marker that line will be on there and you won't be able to get it off and it smears all over the place so a dry erase marker works really nice pencil works really good if it's not going to be exposed it's up in the ceiling underneath some ceiling tile you can use whatever you want Okay, so let's get ready to bend this thing. We're gonna set this up and we wanna have the offset. The offset is gonna go up and then down. So this one here, when we bend this, we're gonna actually want this one to come up. So let's go ahead and set this in here. And we got the inch and a half EMT. I'm gonna run this follow bar in tight. And then I'm going to make sure that that line's lined up. And I'm gonna set this up so that way it doesn't dog leg to where I can actually check this. And it's pretty close to zero. And what does it look like? Straight up and down. I think we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna put some tension on it. I'm going to make sure that the bender handle is in the bend mode. I'm going to double check for dog leg. Just to kind of make sure it looks pretty damn good. Okay. 
So, now, we're gonna bend these at 30 degrees. Hey, Jim, how you doing? All right, so, give a guy a hand. We're gonna bend this 30 degrees. We're gonna try that uh, stub with an offset. And so, when I bend this, I've got the scale set at, it's still at zero, and we're gonna count the number of clicks. This is particularly important and bend in this one because we're gonna bend 30 degree bend on the first one, and then we're gonna bend a 30 degree bend on the second one to create that offset. And so if I go the same number of clicks, that it should be parallel. And so we're gonna bend 30 degrees I think we're ready to go. There's two. There's four. And it looks to be about 15 degrees. There's six. There's eight. We're getting close. There's 10. Yep. And is that about 30 degrees? Okay, now we want to take into consideration spring back, but what do we got? Yeah, we're, we're right at about 30. Let's go one more click just because of spring back. Okay, then I'm going to put this in an unload mode, bring this back up, and it should be a bright sounding click. Click, so it's in unload mode. I'm going to take my bender handle out. And we should be able to unload this. Let's grab that follow bar. Okay, now we're gonna run this up. We did before. Notice how the, the conduit is hitting the floor. So in this situation, we've had to take some two by fours and whatnot and put underneath the wheels to raise that up, or else we could go out to the loading dock and set it over the loading dock to do that. So, okay, we had to get creative because the stub up was hitting the floor. So we got some blocking and we placed it underneath the wheels to elevate the bender in the front so that way the stub up won't hit the floor and we can wind up creating this bench. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the bender handle is in the bend mode. See how it came down? And then we're gonna set our bender in there. And if we remember right, we bent it 11 clicks. We had 10 and then we added one for spring back. So we'll bend it 11 clicks so we can go parallel and we'll see how this works. There's four. Six. Eight. Ten. And then one extra, there it is. I'll put this in the unload mode, bring it back up. Nice bright click to unload. There it is. It's in that position, take the bender handle out so it don't get hit in the head. Are we running about the same? Pretty close. All right, so let's check. Yeah. And we'll pull this out. I'll grab the follow bar. And you got the saddle. Okay, and you can press onto it. And we can set line this up with that. And that'll be that line there, Jim. Measure the distance from this line here to there. And we're looking at about eight, eight and a half. Yeah, eight and three eighths. Eight, eight and three eighths, eight and a half. So we're pretty close to the eight. So we're going to be getting over the top of our obstruction on that bend. So we just want to make sure that we be safe. We're wearing gloves. We're wearing safety glasses in case some metal flies or whatever. And we're going to take the bender handle out of the ratcheting mechanism so that way it doesn't hit anybody and we just want to make sure that we get the roller in the right position and we're using the right shoe and we're using the, the equipment properly because it's a piece of heavy equipment and you could pinch your fingers you could get hurt somehow with this thing if you're
fooling around and you want to make sure that the bender handle is in the bend mode or the unload mode and count your clicks.